So I'm Sork.M, one of the uh, admins here at HQ for iWire. And we'll be doing a little bit of a scout training kind of overview of the uh, basic tools and what you're going to be seeing now um, in the screen. Um, what it does is it opens up a lot for kind of what's going on behind the scenes for how you know when a cell is being relatively complete or if there's an error in the data that needs to be corrected, um, that kind of thing. Um, so you're going to see a lot more information than you might have seen before as a regular player. And uh, you, it's a lot of information, so don't worry if you don't remember everything while we're going through it. But um, the manual and then you'll have notifications as well can provide you references back to what I may talk about. As well as we're going to try to uh, hopefully have this up as a video for you guys. So the first thing you'll notice is that you have a new bar um, up at the top of your screen, which is called the scouts log. And then you'll also have some more information down at the uh, bottom bar of your screen. Um, I'm gonna go through a couple of uh, settings that you can do just to make it a little easier to see what's happening on the screen. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna minimize the leaderboard just to get that out of the way while we're training. And then I'm gonna go to settings and you'll have the, uh, make sure your heat map legend um, in the settings menu is turned on. And then for me personally, I uh, prefer to turn on plasticized neuron as that changes the uh, surface texture of the neurons that are being displayed in overview. I find that uh, plasticized neuron is easier for me to kind of see things going on. Um, you can choose what one you prefer. And then the other thing is I highly suggest if you're having any slowness or anything to turn off animate cube transitions. Um, just a couple little tips right there. All right, so um, first thing you'll notice is that you can enter a cube ID number down here at the bottom. So um, I have a string of various cubes here I could jump to um, that I've already jumped to today. Uh, and then there's also this uh, drop down menu. Uh, this provides us with uh, three, in the case of Scout, I'm going from a Scout account right now, by the way. Um, so Scouts have access to uh, three um, heat map menus, and these kind of just basically let us know what's going on with the cell. So um, I'm gonna talk about the shortcuts that I prefer to use rather than the drop down menu. And that would be um, one will take us to scythe vision. And that's right here. I'm gonna talk about the different colors in a minute. We'll come back to this. This is going to be the heat map you're going to use the most. And um, you're probably never going to change off of it once you've <laughs> turned it on. <laughs> Uh, then the number two on your keyboard, or if we select it in the uh, drop down menu here, would be the low weight heat map. Uh, this talks about, um, or this talks about, this shows uh, basically um, kind of what the, how many people have submitted traces or played on uh, various cubes in a cell. Uh, we'll go over what weight means and uh, why it's important to have a heat map that shows weight in a bit. And the last one is three on your heat map. Um, that's also the created heat map. This is just kind of a cool heat map to show you what's um, been the newest created, um, so the newest kind of cube uh, in iWire. So um, in the case of the cell, which is relatively new, um, the uh, soma or the cell body, which is where we tend to start our cells from, is a lighter blue, so it's older. And then we have like a newer branch here that's bright orange. So just kind of a fun thing to see. Um, it's also useful if you think that there's like a huge merger going. Let's say you see a second cell body in the overview. Um, maybe you turn on the created heat map and you can kind of trace where maybe those orange cubes or those hot pink cubes are leading back to maybe a purple cube. And that can help you find out where like there might be a problem. Okay, um, and then if you never, if you, if you never, if you don't want to look at a heat map, you can hit the zero button and that'll take you to the none in the, there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up our scythe vision. As I said, this is the most important one. Once you get familiar with the colors, you can turn off your show heat map uh, legends uh, key if you so desire. Um, but for now, I suggest you keep it up to kind of keep it as a reminder of what all the colors mean. I'll start with the uh, first kind of most obvious thing, which is white. And white basically means uh, that the cubes are frozen. They cannot be played. They cannot be uh, reaped or edited by a uh, scythe or an admin um, in order for them to 
have any kind of, you know, editing action taken upon them. They need to be unfrozen before they um, would have like, you know, anything happen to them. So uh, if you see a cell body that is not frozen, it's either a merger or um, you need to let um, an admin or a scythe know that uh, there's an unfrozen cell body because we don't generally like folks playing these um, mainly because um, it's just dust and uh, a usual, uh, oh my goodness, an interesting chat in chat right now. Um, I usually reap all of these uh, when I prepare these cells for being placed on iWire. So um, they're going to be admin weighted most of the time anyways. All right, so frozen cubes are white. Frozen, makes sense. Uh, if a scythe freezes a cube, it'll be a light gray color. It's really not easily distinguishable between the white and the scythe, but um, it's still frozen. Um, you'll probably not see scythe freeze very often. Um, the base color, which is this uh, aquamarine color, uh, if you want to call it that, is the uh, like just normal playing cubes. So it's just a cube that's in play. Um, there's nothing odd going on with it. Um, so it's just this green color. If an admin has edited a cube, it will show up in yellow. Hold on, let me just change my settings real quick, um, just so we can see a little better. Um, so let's make the, the glow just a little less glaring. All right, so that's orange. Let's change cells real quick. I'm gonna change to, um, Oh, I don't know. Let's just change to something random. All right, uh, there we go. All right. So the yellow means that an admin has edited the cube, and if you know there's an issue with it, then you'll need to um, basically have an admin like change it. Uh, so uh, essentially, you usually don't have to worry about those cubes unless you know we maybe made something where test extensions. We aren't perfect. That's why we're a consensus-based game. <laughs> um, so there you have it. Uh, the blue is where a scythe has reaped or scythed a cube. Um, I'll probably be using the word reaped for the rest of this uh, kind of training session to say that that's when the, what uh, editing a cube is or fixing it after maybe somebody's played it um, kind of means. Um, we call it reaping. Um, so where a scythe has gone in and reaped a cube, it is it will show up as blue in the overview in this blue color. Then if a scout, which is one of you guys, will flag a cube, which is basically your way of saying like, hey, I think there's an issue here, it will show up in this lovely orange color um, that you can see here in the overview. And then completes. So how do we know that a cell is fully complete? Well, we have um, size go through a cell and they will look at uh, kind of completeness that's happening and they'll mark a cube is complete or branch is complete as they go along and complete. And then admins have that too as well. So in the case of this um, artifact that's been, you know, got only a little bit left, it's got only these two little green parts, um, a lot of it's already been completed. When a scythe completes a cube, it takes it out of play. So it means that no one can, um, no can, can play it. So if you were to hit start playing, you shouldn't be given any of these pink cubes you see here, or pink parts of this branch, I should say. Um, a pink color means that one scythe has decided to complete, and then we just have a second scythe come along and say, yep, I agree with you, and then it turns this purple color. For um, admins, it's a really dark purple color. I think if we were to look at um, 47A, I saw some dark purple, I think. I might have lied, though. Maybe I didn't. Anyways usually only see admin complete, um, mostly on cells that are almost nearly complete or have been completed, and that's going to be that very dark color. So that's kind of a, oh, here, here's some admin complete. I knew I saw some here. So this is admin complete right here. Um, if you notice that I'm moving around in the overview, basically all I'm doing is I'm doing left click and rotate. That rotate hits around with point. To move it across the screen, I'm right click and dragging. Um, you can also do it with middle click as well. Um, the most important thing that you'll suddenly have to do, uh, be able to do is that you can left click on a branch and that will show you a cube. So that will take you to that cube. Um, and it'll show you information about it, what's the status, what's going on with it. And um, from there you can look inside that cube, um, see what's going on with the 2D and um, 
essentially kind of just hop around. So just left click around. And if you left click on a branch and then rotate, it'll rotate you around that cube area. Okay, so that's basically an overview of what you're seeing right now in these screens. Um, if I click off a cube, you'll notice that it'll change back down to showing the enter queue number and the site vision. I should note that um, there are some add-ons that are available um, that may add a um, cell ID number here as well as um, a couple other extras. Currently, I only have the iWire DLC and the utility scripts turned on. Um, if you want to use any of the extra other scripts, um, Scythe will probably want to use custom highlight um, and cubes, uh, then uh, feel free to turn those on. Um, I'm just going to do the basics right now uh, before we, um, and not worry about talking about any of these add-ons. All right, so let's see here. Um, cube information. Let's say I select this cube in overview. Uh, you'll notice that it'll give me the cube number at the bottom, as well as tell me what its weight is, uh, how many votes, which are basically how complete it is, um, those complete votes, and then um, also how many parents, so how many cubes have come before, and also how many um, children, so how many cubes have grown from this uh, cube. An easy way to see these kind of things is we can hit the 25 parents, and it will highlight all 25 parents back to where it started. And if we want to, we can unclick that, and then we can show the all 21 children right here. So that's pretty fun. Um, great way to see if there's a merger or something. Um, maybe you're not sure about something. It, it looks kind of weird in the overview. You log in, you're like, oh, what's this giant thing going across the screen that doesn't look like it belongs in the cell? Um, you can use the show parents or children to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the um, shift key or um, the other button you can hit is this little um, cone like reaper hood thing. Um, it's called the inspect panel. A lot of people refer to it as the toolbar or the site toolbox. Um, there's lots of little names for it. Um, you can click and drag it around your screen however you want. So you can position it where you want if you need to move it. For the moment, I'll just keep it over here um, and you can move it as need be. Um, once again, you can hit this to hide it and shift it as well. Um, here we have a little bit of redundancy. Um, there's multiple ways to do things in iWire. Um, so uh, you can highlight children this way. Um, you'll notice that it gets highlighted here, down here. Um, also as well, if you hover over, you'll get some tooltips that'll include the keyboard shortcuts. Um, so you can turn that on and off. You can highlight the parents right here as well. Um, the next button is the flag button. We'll go over that when we want to uh, flag something from overview. Um, I'm gonna go over some of the other information you're seeing in the toolbox. Um, and then this is the inspect button. We'll enter into the cube and inspect it in a minute. First, we're gonna go through this information. All right, so um, currently we have the cube ID listed, um, which is also listed down here. The weight, which is 4.3. I'll go over what weight means in a minute. How many children, how many parents, um, how many complete votes the cube has. Uh, whether or not it's been assignable. Um, status, and then I'll get into the other stuff. Okay, so weight seems to be a pretty common thing. We have a heat map dedicated to it. What does weight mean? Well, how do we decide how many people uh, play a cube and how much has been played enough? Well, um, we find that generally speaking, after three people with good accuracy have played a cube, uh, the consensus is mostly good uh, at four. People with good accuracy playing a cube, so a weight of 4.0, um, then we basically say, all right, enough people have played this cube, the consensus should be good and correct, and we take it out of play. So when you hit the start playing button, you will not be served cubes that have a weight of four or higher. Um, that's just something to know. The exception will be marathon cells, um, and that's just a special situation. Uh, why does it say 0.3 on this cube? Well, if you have very low accuracy, let's say you know, you're a newly joined player, you're still learning, um, you don't have hot accuracy, you know, it's 10% uh, you know, or something, you are given a weight of 0.1. So essentially you have less of a kind of uh, influence on what the consensus is of the cube because you don't have good accuracy. So essentially that means that we've had three uh, low accuracy players play this cube as well as four high accuracy players play the cube. Um, so that's why this cube has a weight of 
Um, most of the time, um, this is the difference between being enfranchised and disenfranchised. Uh, enfranchised means that you have a weight of one. If you're disenfranchised, it means you have a weight of 0.1 when you are playing a cube. Uh, for your purposes, uh, if you see a cube and you think something's funky in it or you got a review mode that you don't agree with, uh, look at the weight. Uh, if the weight is lower than three, we suggest you don't report it unless it's a very serious, you know, um, AI issue or a C merger or something really crazy is going on um, because uh, maybe that third person will break a tie and the good uh, trace will show up. So um, that's why we say don't reap anything to our sites until weight three. And also I recommend to a lot of scouts, don't flag anything until weight three. Um, however, as I said, there are exceptions to this rule. Um, it's more of a guideline. Um, but you know, if you trailblaze a cube, or let's say um, you were the second person to play a cube, and the trailblazer just completely went off the rails or something, um, then and your review mode does not match up or something, don't flag it. <laughs> Wait for another person to play. Maybe they'll agree with you, and the correct consensus will happen. Um, so sometimes it's a little bit of a patience game. All right. So going back to our weight heat map real quick you'll see that uh, the colors say if it's greater than weight three or less than weight three. And that's to help uh, people decide, all right, I can complete this cube or okay, um, I, you know, I can edit it. So a lot of times uh, our sites will toggle onto the weight heat map to check to make sure that a cube's reached the proper weight um, before they declare it compl a cube complete. Uh, and um, basically, um, on this cell in particular, everything's, most everything's reached weight three, excuse me. If we were to go to a newer cell, so let's go to the 84, uh, you'll see that uh, there are a couple cubes here who, if we click on them, let's say they're weight two, purple's weight two, um, and then weight one is uh, blue color, and then weight zero will show up as red color. Uh, do we have anything newer? Yes, the artifact. Ah, here we go. Here's some weight one cubes. So you can see when I click on them, they show up as weight one. Very handy, very cool. Okay, so we're going to go back to our scythe vision heat map and we'll keep going down uh, some of the information. So I'm going to click on random cube again. Um, and we can see here that uh, it has 14 children. So that's how many cubes have come after parents, 16 children, votes. Uh, this cube is not purple or pink. It has not been completed by a scythe. We'll go to a different one. You'll see here that uh, this pink one shows up as uh, one scythe has just said it's complete out of two. And then if we click these, two scythes have voted that it's complete. So that's what votes means. Assignable. Assignable means whether or not if you hit the start playing button, you will be given this cube in play. Um, so in the case of the complete uh, cube here with uh, two complete votes on it, um, it is not assignable. If we were to click on this cube that reached weight four, it's not assignable. Let's click on a cube that is at weight one. It is assignable, it's a yes. And if we were to um, look at another cube, it will say it's not assignable, such as the frozen one. Um, you'll notice that the status has changed as well. So this one tells me it's frozen. This one tells me it's active, meaning it's actively part of the cell. Um, traces. Traces means uh, how many people have traced a cube. So uh, in this case of this one with weight 4.0, it says four traces. Uh, if we were to, to go to here, there's three traces. So if we were to see a uh, point like that 4.3 weight cube, you would see seven traces. Parent task, that will jump you immediately to the cube that is the task ahead. You'll notice that I jumped, so let me hit that again. I jump immediately to the cube that's seated this next, or spawned this next cube. It also tells me the ID that I can jump to in the child task as tool. Inspected. Um, inspected means that our system, the spawner, has looked at a cube and said, yes, I'm going to, you know, grow a new cube from here, or um, I'm going to add that person's weight. If it says inspected, no. Um, generally, it means that something's wrong with the system. It's being slow. Um, give it a minute. If it's still saying inspected, no, then um, maybe ask if the spawner's being slow <laughs> uh, in chat and report it. Uh, that's kind of just like a little like, is the system working? All right, players. This lists all the people who have played a cube. So in this case of this four-way cube, we had four players. They're all listed in white. 
we were to select this cube that's been scythed, um, you can see that Dragon Turtle has scythed the cube and he has completed it, which makes sense. There's one vote here. And suddenly we notice that there's a weight of seven. All right, how do folks overcome weight? Um, a scythe, when they reap a cube, has a weight of three. So in this case, we had four players, if you count this, one, two, three, four, play the cube. And then Dragon Turtle came in, he's a scythe, um, needed to uh, change the cube. Maybe there was an issue in the cube, right? Um, he scythed it and he added on a weight of three. So now we have a weight of seven for this cube. That's why it's so high. Generally speaking, if you see a weight, you know, seven or six or something like that, it's probably because the cube has been scythed. Um, and then also his name will show up um, in purple here because he's chosen to complete the cube. Um, if you clicked on admin cube, we have very a lot of power. So an admin reaped cube will show up as a million weight. Um, <laughs> basically, we just kind of override the system. That's why uh, if you find a cube that was reaped by an admin, you'll need to get an admin to correct it. Um, we're the only ones that can kind of fix those cubes. Uh, you'll also see that our names will show up as a Grim Reaper instead of specifically our usernames, in my case, sort.m. Um, and that's just uh, because that's how the system works. Um, so we are all minions of Grim, and uh, as a result, we show up as his name. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, let's see. I think that's it for the names and the players. That's kind of a fun little thing. We're going to go to that one. Ah, there we go. If you were to flag a cube as a player, we have a scout who flagged a cube here. For some reason, it shows up as yellow. I've been trying to change that to orange. Um, that's a cosmetic error. Um, but Orch here is a scout, and he's showing up um, for flagging this cube. That's why it's orange. All right. So that's all the information there. Um, I know it's a lot. Um, it, it's broken down in the notifications and in the manual. And you know, as always, ask someone. Um, but one of the fun things is to just uh, click around. OK, this is what I was looking for. Another situation, the duplicate. So duplicate cubes means that there is a segment in the cube that belongs or has been already identified to be part of another cell. Maybe one that we've completed, maybe one that's also being currently traced. Um, basically, it's our kind of like detection system to say, hey, you added this, you know, maybe it's probably you added like this blob here in another cell. We think, it, it, and you said it belonged there. Uh, duplicates will show up as um, status duplicate and um, red. Um, essentially, oh, sorry about that. Uh, they are no longer in play. So if you see a duplicate cube, you do not need to flag it. It's already been flagged, right? It's bright red. Um, a scythe may see it and they will need to fix it um, regardless of the weight that that cube is at because um, basically, so in this case, this cube is at weight two. Someone will need to uh, reap it. Uh, a scythe will need to reap when they, um, they see them because no one will be served them when they hit the start playing button. Okay, let's inspect a cube. Well, how do we know when to inspect a cube? Well, let's say there's something funky in our review mode. Um, I had a cube that I played and I got a very bad uh, accuracy on it and it showed up as red. I'm gonna jump to that cube right now. If you notice, I just copy and pasted it. If you hit click off um, anything, or if you hit the escape key, that'll bring up this menu down here. You can just copy paste the cube ID. Uh, if you, it's posted in the um, chat as well, uh, you can uh, basically click on it and it'll jump you right to that cube. So I'm gonna hit this and it'll jump me right to this cube. Okay, so um, on my other account, I got a bad review mode. Uh, and um, it showed up as one of my additions in red. And I was like, oh, I disagree with this. So you can toggle now to inspect mode. So if you have review mode, um, it's kind of tricky right now because I haven't played a whole lot of cubes. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So you'll see you now have a toggle down at the bottom that'll take you to inspect mode versus review mode. So if you disagree with something in review mode, you can quickly toggle to inspect mode and. Um, Kind of show this out. So that's one way to um, basically get to something. Uh, okay, let's go back to that cube that I know has an issue in it. 
So, in order to get into it, I've hit the I button. Um, you can hit the Enter button as well to inspect a cube. That'll jump you into the cube. This shows you the cube as it stands with the current consensus. This is not your review mode. Um, when you toggle to inspect mode, you'll you notice that the colors change too when I just briefly showed it. Um, and then also, um, uh, it's different from what you see in overview because we have some colors. Depending on what you've selected as your personalized cube color options, I'm going with the default ones iWire gives you. So I will use these in the description. Uh, if you know what you know your colors mean, some people I know use green and blue or green and red or something instead of this uh, default, um, you'll know what those mean. I'm going with the defaults here. So seed color always shows up in dark blue. Um, so that's this piece right down here. Uh, the pinker a segment is, the less confident, the less people have decided that that segment belongs. So in this case, if we were to look at this cube, um, I think it has a weight of four or three. So we'll say like three people agreed on this light blue color, maybe two people only agreed on the purple color, and maybe one or two people only agreed on the pink. Um, and so pink is usually a sign that, you know, less people have agreed on it or that, um, you know, it's a merger or maybe somebody added it and it's turning out to be bad. All right. Um, so let's say we look at this cube and we traced it. The review mode came back and we're like, no, 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 no. It's actually really missing a branch. Um, and it is actually missing a branch. There is a, um, a, a black spill, so an uh, inks trace here, which we will trace in a minute. Um, and so let's do that. I'm going to go through some of the buttons first. Uh, cool thing about um, inspecting cubes is now you can show that show parent cube, and that'll show you the branch that's leading right into the cube or, you know, whatever preceded your cube. Uh, this is very helpful when, let's say, you have, uh, you know, two seed pieces and you're like, what? Why are there two AI seed pieces in here? And maybe it ends up it's because there's, you know, two very close branches entering the cube, or maybe it is a merger, um, or if there's something very confusing. Um, that's the nice thing about inspect mode, you can show the uh, parent. You can also show the children, so anything that's grown after the cube. In this case, this shows up in this green color. Notice that it's showing the color that is um, what you see in overview, so that's um, always uh, fun. So both of these haven't been scythed or reaped or anything happened to them. They're just the base color. Um, I'm just turning them on and off with these buttons. The other thing we can do is we can hit the delete seed piece button. You'll notice that dark blue part went away. If you have, um, I believe, utilities on, which is what I have on currently, there's a regrow seed button. You can hit that and that'll bring it back. You can also hit the control Z button. That'll bring back the last pieces that you may have removed. Um, the other thing you can do is you can delete the trace. Let's say you don't agree with every, anything in the cube. You move the whole trace. I'm going to hit Control Z. That's going to bring it all back. When it brings it all back, you'll notice that it removed any of the consensus information. Sorry, it's confusing. <laughs> um, all right. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make an entry because I know there's a missing branch here. Um, it's right at the end. If you notice, I am in the Y um, here. And I'm just gonna trace out this black spill. Um, what I'm going to do is, um, instead of having you guys, well, you probably wanna watch me trace this because it is a tricky trace. I'm gonna switch real quick to our Z view. Um, Z tends to be the best for certain types of traces, this one included. Um, and the thing with black spills is a lot of times you kind of just select and fall along the black area um, and then you'll go back and prune off what you don't think belongs. Um, so in this case, as we're tracing, um, there's some stuff like this that kind of is just excess. And you can see here that we have our dark line, nice and dark here. Oh, that's outside, I'll take that out. And that's pretty relatively forward. So. Um, as a scout, if you find something like a missing branch like this, you'll probably want to trace it in in uh, explore mode. I use the explore mode button over on the side, or you can hit control E on your computer. And now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, hit the little screenshot button. 
So you have a couple options here. How do folks know what change needs to be made in the cube? Um, well, we have the scout log, and that's this area up top here. I'll go through the categories in a bit. First, we're just going to make a new entry in the scout log. So I need to let a scythe or you know someone, yeah, pretty much a scythe or an admin, uh, know that hey, um, there's a missing branch here. It belongs. So I'm going to make a new entry. I can make a new entry here if I want to. Um, I can take a screenshot currently at this point, or I can hit the flag button. So um, in the case for scouts, um, you can hit the flag button right now, and that'll show up. Uh, for a scythe, if you um, you know are making an edit or removing something and you don't want to submit that thing that you're removing, you'll hit the capture screenshot button. So um, this will also take a screenshot currently, and then if I hit the flag button, it'll pop up with that current image. Um, you can retake it using this button. Um, let's say we can annotate it. So, um, and from there we can, you know, circle it and say, "Hey, um, missing branch," and save it. And then you'll see that that shows up in my uh, thing here. We want a scythe. Um, there's a variety of categories here to select. Um, so in this case, it was missing a branch, and we need somebody to add it in. Uh, there's a few other things. There was a merger, a fuse merger, which is where, you know, it's completely fused together. C mergers, where the computer has added an additional part to it. Uh, wrong seed means that the computer's just completely added the wrong thing. Test extension, um, this could be a text extension, um, so maybe, maybe we'll add that in. Uh, there's a missing nub, there's some dust that's missing. Uh, this is a black spill, so, um, or misalignment, kind of let people know what problems are going on. So as you can see, uh, you can find things from overview as you want, um, as well as from uh, in cube as you're playing. That's the best way to find problems um, as you go along. If you don't agree with a review mode and you find the cube is high weight, um, then it'll do that. Uh, you can also flag from overview if you were to hit the uh, the flag button here. Let's say we don't like something in overview. It'll grab a screenshot of the overview and then you'll put in the issue and submit. Um, so don't worry if you accidentally hit the F button here um, in overview, you aren't going to start randomly flagging random cubes. Uh, it will, you'll see this kind of screen pop up and you go, oh, oh no, let's close out of that. I didn't mean to do that. Um, all right, uh, anything else? we're going to go over the scouts log. So scouts log has a variety of information here, um, kind of just stuff for you to look at on as a scout, as a scythe. Um, scythe will be going through the entries. So uh, cell list just lists um, any of the uh, current cells, you know, that have uh, open, you know, entries in it. Uh, open logs lists all of our current open entries here. Um, Admin, uh, this is if you know a cube needs an admin uh, that'll populate here. So you don't really need to look at it um, as a scout unless you're interested in seeing what maybe an issue may be. Uh, scythes, so you can see here my uh, two entries I just made as a Pokemon trainer are in the need scythe section here, as well as there are two other entries. Uh, watch, these are all cubes that people, you know, they're not 100% sure that it's good. So it's a test extension or maybe that um, it's a you know a tricky trace that they're like I think I added it correctly. Uh, let's hope it doesn't grow into a merger. So that's why there's a lot of watch kind of settings, kind of like a little note or breadcrumb to say hey, history. Um, that'll give you um, a log of anything that you've done. So uh, we just flagged um, a couple cubes. Though I will note that my uh, my scouts log is attached to uh, my admin account right now. So um, we're seeing a little bit different from uh, what we usually see as a scout. Um, so you can see where cubes are reaped. You can see where we've normally played some cubes, maybe it's a trailblazer. Um, so that's kind of a fun thing to be able to see. It takes a little bit of time sometimes when you pop it up, but uh, it kind of shows you a great history of what's going on with uh, what you've done. Uh, cube details, um, well, that just flashed something at me saying, hey, uh, you don't have a cube selected. Cube details, it'll bring up uh, information about that cube. So if we were to go to that cube that we flagged, we could bring up our entry and we'd see it right here. So that's kind of fun. It also tells you the weight and the completes. Um, you can jump to a cube by clicking on it in the scout cell, as well as if we want to go and look at all the entries for a um, 
a cell. Uh, the plus button, that's creating a new entry. So, you know, let's say we're an overview. We can create a new entry from here this way as well. So there's a variety of uh, ways to kind of make notes and say, hey, there's a problem here. Uh, beyond that, um, you can hide the scouts log usually with this little scythe button down here. Uh, if you have the utilities turned on, this just shows you the borders of the data set. So this is where, um, you know, there's nothing more to grow. We don't have any more data. Um, you can turn that off if you want. Um, other than that, I think I've gone over most of the basics. If you have any questions, um, now's the time to ask. Uh, if not, um, we'll be good for today. And as always, ask in Scouts chat if you need uh, more information. Folks are happy to say hello. We're happy to answer. You can email us if you need to. Um, and there's plenty of resources. As you know, you got the email with the manual. Uh, there'll be notification throughout the week from you explaining each of the little bits um, of what I just went over in this uh, video uh, is, I don't think, uh, is there any scythe things that I need to do? I, th I think the person who's currently in this one is a scout. Um, unfortunately, Spooky Growly was not able to make it. But, all right, let me just, Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> Do you, okay, let me go over scything then real quick with you because I did old scouts. <laughs> uh, scything, um, so as you know, if you have a problem with the cube, we would go to the flag cube and change it. Um, we, we would reap it and it would turn blue instead with our change made there. Um, and completing, you'll complete going from, we recommend from the cell body outwards because it's the way that cubes grow and moving along a branch. So as you'll see, I kind of zoom in close and then I'll look at something and be like, all right, that looks kind of weird there. So let's inspect and be like, okay, all right. The reason why it looks weird is because it's a minor fuse mergers. Um, we, yeah, we're recording this current one. And, um, oh, look at that. I found a missing nub. <laughs> All right. Um, so then you would, you would complete it as you go along the branch. Um, I recommend kind of going along the branch as you go out. It's easier to keep a track of. Um, you'll notice that I tend to use right-click paint a lot. Some people just like to click up a branch cube by cube um, as they look. Um, my brain's completely forgetting the rest of the site thing <laughs> information. If you had any other questions, just ask me. Um, it's probably the easiest thing to do right now. <sighs> okay. All right. Um, I can, if there's enough sites who, like, if you would talk to some other sites who want to, you know, review or something, um, we can, we can certainly arrange to do a more site heavy um, focused one. Obviously, I'm on a scout account currently during this training. Um, I can certainly go over that. Um, next week is fine. So um, just, just let me know. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for rejoining me in this, this, uh, little mini video we had to add on at the end. Um, I'm sorry that we, we had to change. <laughs> All right, um, I'll sign off for now and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys online on iWire. All right.